Good morning and welcome back to the building. <laughs> For those that haven't been in the building, that's like me. So yes, um, I'm all the way over here, by the way. Um, to those that are joining us online, kia ora na and good morning. So we're going to stand and do some live worship, people. So come on and stand with us. Uh, <clears throat> We celebrated a birthday yesterday, and so too much happy birthday yelling and screaming. So you have to sing with me this morning. So yeah, I picked some songs that we all know. So yeah, hallelujah. Let's just go sing along with me and be louder than me. That'll be amazing. I have the awesome Dura joining me this morning as well. So yeah, we'll get into it, eh? Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. You guys all know this one. Lord, I come. Lord, I come into your holy place. Stand in awe of your cleansing grace. Who am I that you would care for me? I glorify the one who died sing glorify your hands to your hands I commit my life day by day as a living sacrifice who am I that you would care for me I glorify the one who died Let your name be lifted up and glorified. Let your name, let your name be lifted up and glorified. Let your name, 
Let your name be lifted up and glorified. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we give you glory. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning that we can gather together, Lord. Father, as one under, your, under the roof that you've provided for us, Lord God. Father, we thank you. We ask, Lord God, you continue to move in this place, Lord God. Father, this morning, Lord, anything that is not of you, Lord God, we're asking, Father God, here in the building, Lord God, and at home, Lord God, that you move through the airways, Father. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh this morning, Lord God. Fill us afresh, Lord God. Fill us afresh, Lord God. I call you answer, and you came to my rescue, and I want to be where you Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let me give, give praise to God wherever you are. Father, how great. How great is our God. How great is our God. I don't know if you're here this morning and maybe you know, church is not what you normally do. It's great to be back in the building. But do you know how great your God is that He loves you so much, regardless of what you did last night? Regardless of what you did this morning, He loves you, but He loves you too much for you to stay the same. Loves you too much. That is how great our God is. Regardless of what's going on in your life, if you find yourself in the middle of the storm, come on, our God knows the way out. It takes patience. It takes time. But when you seek Him with all your heart and follow Him, he will lead you out of the storm. That is how great our God is. There's nothing too big nor too small for our God. How great Come on. Why don't you begin to lay down whatever it is that you're going through this week. Lay it down at His feet. There's nothing too big or too small. So Lord, I'm giving it all to you. Because how great is our God that you love us so much that you gave your son so that we can be free. Come on, let's declare it. Yes, Lord. And I agree. Thank you, Lord. Laying it down at your feet. All my anxieties. All my fear. How great. Hallelujah. Come and give a hand for the Lord wherever you are. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, Tura, you know, as you were leading us in that song, wow, didn't Tura do amazing? I want to give Tura a hand. There you go. You can all have a seat, but, you know, so we're, we're so blessed in sport. We've put all right, and we forget to see that we've got other singers in our church. So Tura, you know, as you were, I really felt as you were singing that song, I could, I could sense the Spirit of God was on you, and you know, He has not forgotten your prayers uh, for Myanmar, for Burma, for your family here in Aotearoa. He has not forgotten you. How great is our God? And the Lord will say He's going to open doors that you thought were closed. You thought they were closed. You thought it was over. But the Lord will say that I will open the doors, says Lord, because there is abundance of me that will flow out of you too because of your heart. He sees your heart. And as out of your heart, the Lord says, my love, my grace will flow. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you still speak to us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, everyone said, amen. Come on, give them that hand for the Lord. Come on. Oh, so good.
Hey, um, warm welcome to all those joining us online and all on our uh, Elam uh, Rutoro Fano. Kia ora uh, tato ka to, to. So good to have you with us online. And I'll tell you what, um, I know your pastor's here to Marama. They'll be on there on Facebook. But everyone else who's in the building, so good to be back, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what? We're back for good. Well, by faith, we're back for good. By good, you know, we're saying it's kind of we're in this, these days, right? It's kind of like mm, what it is. But you know, I'm so glad. I was kind of wishing that the mandates will go off on Friday, but hey, it's tomorrow, which means. Regardless of what service you go to, the 9 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, no mandates. The doors are open. Invite your friends, your whanau, everyone, and let's come back and let's join. It's so, much, so, it's so much better together, isn't it? Right? It is so much. I just love being in the house of God together. And, and before I keep going, I better go back to my wife. She's, I love my wife. I did, if I didn't have my wife, I would have no idea what I'm doing. Every moment. Anybody else knows what I'm talking about? It is so good. So, warm welcome if you're joining us here. If, you, if this is your first time here, welcome. You come to a great place. And, uh, and um, you know, if, if you hear some alarms going off, basically we want to keep you safe. We just make our way across the car park. There's a bit of grass area there. We can continue on our service there. If you're online, maybe we'll take a mobile device with us. You can join us out there somewhere. So, warm welcome. So good to be here. We love also to ce- celebrate families. Um, Birthdays, wedding anniversaries, anything special in your life. So uh, if that's you, I want to encourage you to come on up. And I am going to ask, uh, let's go, oh, uh, um, Eli, uh, uh, Elias, <laughs> can you come join me on stage? Elias, Elias, uh, uh, and I will call you Eli, <laughs> just for today, just for this moment. Come on here. Hey, give this young man a hand. He's amazing. Hey, how, how old are you, Elias? Twelve. Twelve, and I always, I'm already feeling that you're already nearly there. Uh, I reckon that by the end of the year, I'll be looking up to you, you know. Uh, I, you know, Elias, he's, do you know he's 12 years old, but he, he's, he's part of our serve team on a Sunday. He's at the back, and you know, sometimes he does our words, if, and he's one of, to you, you are, you're one of my favorite AV guys. Henry, you're one of my favorite AV guys as well. <laughs> So yeah, but yeah, and uh, and and he also takes photo. He joins our serve team, and hey, you know we're back, we're back in our building, which means you know for some of us we kind of got used to just watching things online. But hey, once you join our serve team, just like this good-looking young fellow over here, that's why I asked him to come on so he can increase the good-lookingness on the stage. So if you've had a birthday or wedding anniversary, love to join. Just come on up. We'd we'll love to give you some crunchy, some crunchy gold or some. Um, what is this? This is Wurika. It's actually dark chocolate. Here we go. Come on, what are we celebrating, uh, Yalta? Yeah, so, so Yalta's, Yalta's by, by himself at the moment, Pastor PJ. She's down in Christchurch. That's right. Oh, Invercargill. Invercargill. Hey, it's, sorry to all those who live in Invercargill, you know. So uh, she's down there looking after y- your daughter. She, yes, she yes, had she some back surgery. Back surgery. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's so, so good. I'm so glad she could go because you've had a bit of uh, COVID scares. And, you're, and, the, and you're, not with you guys, but in your f- in wider your family, yeah. So... <laughs> So, plenty of COVID. No, no, it's yeah. our wedding anniversary. Wedding anniversary. Oh, Put a cut up to the mic. So. Oh, sorry. This, is what, this is what happens when I haven't done this for a long time. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's a wedding of tomorrow? Tomorrow, 48 years. Yeah! Probably the first time we're apart. Because <gasps> she's coming back on Tuesday. So, uh, hello, darling. I'll uh, see you on <laughs> oh, Tuesday. Oh, wow. I'll pick you up. Yep. Wow. Yep. Love I, you. I can imagine the preparation when she comes back. It's going to be amazing. Oh. <laughs> the other thing is I've got to go to court tomorrow. Not, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not, sorry, it sounds a bit crazy, but I'm called for jury duty. So, oh. uh, uh, so yeah, that's another thing. Uh, wow, wow. Could be a big murder case for a week or something like that. Probably not. Yeah. No, no. So, yeah. You know, I've never been picked. I always get through the drawer and I get up, they look at me, no, not him. And I'm like, God, like, I always want to be part of one of those juries. Yeah, I know. I so that's check. happening tomorrow as well. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah, and then it's well, uh, back to normal. 48 years? Come on, share, tell us some, some gems. So, so some people are living 48 years. Oh, my goodness. It's uh, amazing. I always say it's a bit of give and take. Uh, respect each other. Enjoy each other's company. Have fun together. Yeah, you know. Oh, that's know. the way. Yeah, that's the way, you know. Uh, don't be too serious about stuff, you know. That's so, that is, <laughs> you know, that's so, no. here's a man who's been married 48 years. Never go to bed angry. 
because then you won't sleep, I can tell you that. <laughs> I have tried, but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Because so you still, you still wake up. Because if you get a bit angry, you still wake up angry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't sleep. That's it. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Thank you so much, Shelter, right, for sharing I'll, those. Uh, take two of those. Yeah. yeah. Oh. The whole thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. That's why Elias is so good. Well, I'll tell you what, Elias, for doing such a great job, you can take, a, take the whole thing. Take the whole thing with you over there. Sit next to your mum and dad. Look, don't give any to your dad. He's looking at you over there. Okay. We want to celebrate some people online. You've got, get my amazing wife up here. Come on, Paul, why don't you come join me up here? Here we go. What are we, who are we celebrating online? So we've got uh, the nice who's joining us, 275. Oh, from Angre, yes. representing. Uh, we've, of course, got Pastor PJ. Hey, Pastor PJ. So this will be 48th anniversary. Um, Pastor Edward and Marama, Mike and Linda. Um, so hello to everybody. I'm just going to shout out your names because you're not here, but we do... See you online. Uh, yeah, um, Jifta and the family. Kath and Kevin, all the way from UK, always, always hey. joining us. Oh, well, I awesome. love having you guys from the UK joining us. Um, I kind of feel international. Okay, my, I think that's everybody for now. So, yeah, keep rolling in those. Oh, no, Sarah Foot. She says hello. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Um, yeah, if you've got any celebrations, keep it coming. I'll answer them. Me and Mike are online. And Pastor BJ as well. She's on there as well as... Pastor Edward and them. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's what I love about on, online. So even when you go away, like Pastor we PJ in Invercargill, <laughs> she's still joining us for church. Yeah. So Pastor PJ representing, so good. But that's it. Not in Christchurch, but in Invercargill. So it's so good. Well, thank you so much, Portal. Yeah, go, go. Good silence. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, go on, give her a hand. There we go. Oh, thank you. That's mine. Hey, coming up in a couple of weeks, it is Easter. It is one of the, the, the greatest weekends that we celebrate as a Christian movement. It's the reason why we exist today, right? It's, it's about the resurrection, that Jesus has risen. It's not a myth. He has risen. He's alive, right? And we're going to be celebrating so we're on Good Friday service. So we've got, we'll have a Good Friday service, 10 a.m., and Easter Sunday service. And the amazing thing about our Easter Friday service is that we uh, have kids' programs, or even on the, on the Friday, so come along, join us. Because what's, uh, I don't even know what the date is on Easter Friday, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's uh, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So yeah, it is in a couple of weeks. 15th, I think. 15th. Anyway, that's, that's going to go. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and so forth. Yeah, and also, if you want to join, if you want to join our surf team, just fill in one of these one cards. Um, and if you're new here, if you want to find out more information about, if you want to get dedicated, baptized, um, you want to get married, just fill in the uh, one card. If you're looking for someone to get married and you want, someone, you want me to pray for you to get married, then yeah, just put that on there too. We, can, we, see, what, we see what can happen. God moves. God moves. Well, um, I'm really excited because this is our first service back in the building. Back in the building. And you know what? I'm not expecting us to go back on online only. Uh, and I'm excited for that. I'm looking forward to our mandates being lifted. But today, it's also very special because uh, today we've got a baby dedication. Come on. So I'm going to ask the, the Tuteru family <laughs> to come on up. And um, did you want your, everyone else to come up who is your support with you coming up? And what's amazing? Uh, <laughs> come on, give it, here we go, the Tuteru family. Here we go. And so, we, and so it's really special for us because, because this is baby Jaira and he's our grandson. So we're going to be dedicating Jaira. Actually, what am I holding? Can I give you this portal? Thank you. What's portal? Come join us on the stage. What are you doing? Down? Here we go. <laughs> baby, oh, I love that baby dedication. You know, First Samuel, what we read in First Samuel 1, Hannah presented her child to the Lord, dedicated Samuel to the Lord. And Samuel will go on to become uh, one of the great, great prophets in the, in the Old Testament. And, uh, and then we see also with Jesus, Jesus was also presented when he was born, that Mary and Joseph went to the temple and dedicated Jesus to the Lord. And it's a good thing that we do. We ded dedicate our children to the Lord. And so as we begin to, um, to dedicate Jaira, I want to talk to the parents, Hans and Naya. Tanea. Should I say Tanea? <laughs> Hans and Tanea. I call your attention to the command of Yahweh, the command of God. 
And it's from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 7. And Deuteronomy chapter 6 is the sh- known as the Shema in Hebrew, the Shema, one of the most sacred prayers in Judaism. They still pray this prayer today. But I'm going to call your attention to the Shema. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 7. And it says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on to your children, to Mania and onto Jaira. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you play the Xbox. Sorry, it's not in the different translation. <laughs> when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And so this is a command of, of the Lord to you both. To as you um, come and as you begin to, uh, as the Lord has entrusted you with, with his amazing children. So I say to Hans and to Tanea, love God with every ounce and fiber of your energy and teach Jaira to do the same. And as you love God and one another, you will model before Jaira a wonderful love for God that he will want for himself. So Hans and Tanea, by coming forward before God, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves because dedication is not just a dedication of the child, but it's also a dedication of the parents. Dedicate yourselves and gyra to the Lord. If so, please respond by saying, we do. We do. We do. <laughs> if you see anything else, your mom is standing right over there. Okay. <laughs> Will you provide gyra a Christian home of love and peace to raise him in the truth of the Lord's instruction and discipline? And to encourage him to one day trust Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts, and I'm going to take Jaira. Hey, Jaira. Hi. Hi. He always gives me a big smile. Hi. You know what's a Jaira? His whole name is Jaira Hoani Anthony Tuteru. Yeah, well, some of you are laughing. <laughs> so let me tell you what his name means. Jaira, Jaira means, means that the Lord will provide. Huani is, is, is John in English, and it means the Lord is gracious. Anthony, do you know what Anthony means? It means worthy of praise. And so his name is, so Jaira, your name is the Lord will provide, and he is gracious, and he's worthy of praise. That is your name. And as I begin to dedicate you to the Lord, teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you so much. So, Father, we dedicate Jaira to you in your name. So, Father, I pray, may you bless him, use him all the days of his life. And, Father, everything he puts his hands to, he touches, Lord, you will bless. Yes. Well, Jaira, you know, I just get a sense. The Lord will say to you, Jaira, that your life will be a declaration. Your life will be a declaration of who I am, says the Lord. That when people get into your presence or contact, they will see you and they will say, and there's something that you carry, says the Lord. You carry who I am, says the Lord. That you can't help but say, but the Lord, the Lord will provide. The Lord is gracious. And he is worthy to praise. So, Father God, we dedicate that, dedicate Jeremiah to you, Lord. And he says amen and amen. So, Lord, bless him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 There you go. Okay, thank you so much, parents. So, yes, we'll catch you guys. We'll see you after this. Here we go. We got a little gift for you. This is, this is, the the choice is up to you. And this has been, this book has been written by, um, Pastor Mike DeVito, who's the uh, Whangarei Elam Pastor. So it's the book. So it's, here you go. It's a little gift there. And, um, okay, Joe, we'll catch you later. Here you go. Oh, such a cutie. Come on, give them a hand. Oh. It's always a special part of, of us. I love dedicating children. It's just, it's just um, God is into, into families, into this amazing gift that we have. 
And uh, whether, whether you, are, you buy, are a biological parent or not, because many people aren't biological parents, but you're still a parent. You know, right? We still influence. You may be an auntie or an uncle. You, you, you may be not even related to them, but, you know, God has entrusted you to invest in people's lives. And, and, and I love that. There's some, something special about this. Well, we are getting into, um, our, into our series. We've been doing, if you've been watching us online, we've been doing this series called Forgotten Virtues. And normally every month we start a brand new series. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, we're leading into Easter. It's a funny thing, eh, when, when it comes to Easter, you, everyone knows what I'm going to speak about during Easter, right? What else do you speak about? And so, but today, today, we are in the last part of our Forgotten Virtues series. You know, I love this series. And it's, because I, you know, I, when, whenever I preach, I'm always preaching to me, right? I'm always learning, I'm growing, and, I, and I, this, this series has been amazing. What are virtues? Virtues are qualities, qualities that, that help a person do right by someone. Here's the thing, when you do right by someone, you do right by God. It's not just, oh, well, I only do right by God, I don't really care about anyone else, but that's not how God works. When we do right by people, we do right by God, right? And, and this is what virtues are. It's all about being righteous. About, this, is what, this is what it is. And so today I want to I speak about a very important virtue. I'm going to be speaking about the forgotten virtue of integrity. Integrity. Have you ever been to the dairy or to the shop and you get your change, you sit back in your car, and you realize they've given you $10 extra or, or given you more change back? Has that ever, has that ever happened to you? Given, got, given back more change. I mean, when you're given more change, what did you do? Did you sit there and go, well, thank you, Jesus, for blessing me with extra funds? Right? Has anybody, right? Has anybody done that? No, yeah. And uh, everyone done that right? Thank you, Lord, for... And, and, or have you run back in the store and said, hey, hey I just want to let you know you've given me back more change. Here we, here we go. How much did it cost? You know, let's do a little add-up, make sure it's right. Yeah, here you go. Give it back. When you do that... When you take it back into the soil, you know what you're doing? You're doing right by that person. You're doing right by that person. That person's job could be online because at the end of the shift, if the till does not add up, could be mean their job. And when you take it back in, you do right by that person. And when you do right by that person, you do right by God. That's integrity. That's integrity. It is. You know what's really tragic? That in this world, in this world, people are more shocked by integrity than the lack of integrity. Have you noticed? People are more shocked by people doing the right thing than by people who don't do the right thing. Why is that? And the reason being is because when we, when we turn on our TVs or our social media feeds and our news and, and, and when we see somebody on there as a celebrity, a sports star, and who you loved and a might, oh, these, look at this person, he goes to church, I took a photo, I was up in Auckland, had a photo of this great, amazing celebrity, then all of a sudden they're up for drug charges or something like this, and you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? Or we, 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 we look, well, you've got a close friend, and you think, well, this friend is so good to our family, then you find out they're living a double life, and you're shocked, or, 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 or is that Christian? leader, that pastor, that senior pastor, right, and we're shocked, and it's shocked, and that's why the world is more shocked by the fact when you, not that, are more shocked when you do right than when you don't do right, because we're bombarded with people with the lack of integrity within our society, the lack of doing the right thing. What is integrity? Integrity is when your behavior matches your beliefs. Integrity is when your behavior matches your belief, when your private life matches your public life, right? Does your private life match your public life? Your public life is what everyone sees. Are you the same person when no one else is looking, right? Because that's another, because someone else said, that, said this, that integrity, integrity is what you do when no one else is looking, Right? What are you doing when no one else is looking? It's different to reputation. So different to reputation. What's your reputation? Reputation is what other people think of you. Integrity is who you really are. It's when your behaviors line up with your beliefs. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 3 says this. The integrity of the upright guides them. Integrity will guide you will guide you. But the deviousness of treacherous people destroys them. 
the, devious, the deviousness of treacherous people will destroy them. Deviousness. That's what the Bible says, that, that, that the Bible of, of, of people of integrity, the Bible will guide them. It, it, we don't have, when you have integrity, you don't have to sit around saying, well, is this, a, is this, oh, it's, oh, is this kind of a gray area? Uh, well, I'm not sure if it's a gray area. Uh, I think I'll be okay. No, no, no. When you, when, when you live by integrity, it's black or it's white. It's either good or, or it's either right or wrong. When you live by integrity, you, you know I'm doing the right thing. There's there's no question. When you live by integrity, integrity will guide you. And there's another verse that really captures the life of integrity. It's when David, King David, asked God this question in Psalms chapter 15. This is what he says in in verse 1. He says, Yahweh, says, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? Who may live on, who can live in your presence? Who can walk with you, Lord? And the Lord, Lord answers David by saying, a person of integrity. If you want to walk with me, if you want to be in my presence, you have to walk with integrity. That is the person that does. And watch how the rest of the verse begins to explain what integrity is. We go to verse 2. The one whose ways of his life is blameless, who does what is righteous. Righteous is when we do right by people whose ways are righteous, that's integrity, who speaks the truth from their heart, integrity, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slurs on others, that's integrity, integrity. When you have integrity, you have this constant peace. You have this constant, you live without fear, right? You're not thinking, oh, I wonder if people find out. I wonder if they know what I'm doing. I wonder if they know what my other life is going on there. I wonder if they know, I wonder if they'll find out. I wonder if I'll get caught that I'm talking to this person. I'm doing this with this person. I wonder if, they, if I get caught, they find out what I'm looking at, right? When you're a person of integrity, you live without fear. There is no fear of getting caught. There is no fear of being found out, being discovered when you live a life of integrity. It goes on to verse 4. Integrity is someone who despises a vile, a vile person. You see that? Who despises a vile person, but honors those who fear the Lord. That's integrity. They don't justify or glorify breaking the law, right? You know, what do I mean by that? Well, for some people, they, only, they go, oh, I only, have, I only drive at one speed, fast, right? Who keeps, I love this, I love this next part, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind. Oh, did I say that? Oh, well, I didn't mean I was going to give you that much. Oh, you, mm, it, it will hurt you even when it's going to cost you financially. You become a person of your word. Oh, you actually did? Oh, oh, I'm not sure if I can. Even when it hurts. Who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept the bribe, Against the innocent, right? Integrity. See, when you live a life of of integrity, you will gain trust. You will gain respect, honor, and influence. If you want great kids, be a parent of integrity. If you want to be a great leader within your family, if you want to be a great leader within your workplace, amongst your friends, be a person of integrity. If you want influence in the business world, be a person of your word. It's that simple. Integrity. When you have integrity, people will follow you. They will honor you. They will listen to you. They will seek your wisdom and advice because you are a person of integrity. And I love how Psalms 15 ends, right? It ends like this. Whoever does these things will never be what? Shaken. He who lives a life of integrity. The Bible says they will never be shaken. You'll never be shaken when you live not not only according to your beliefs, but more importantly, to the beliefs and teachings of God. You will never be shaken. The sad thing is that so many people aren't. In fact, what, what do you think is the opposite of integrity? 
what's the opposite of integrity, right? In fact, it's, it's what a lot of non-Christians say of Christians. <laughs> what's that? Oh, you're a Christian? Oh, Christians, they're just a bunch of... Oh, you, you, know, you know this. You know this. Hypocrites. I remember um, turning up to work one day, and this person found out I'm a Christian, and he goes, do you know what I think about Christians? I think Christians are a bunch of hypocrites. And I just looked at him and goes, oh, you, you, you are right. And he goes, what do you mean I'm right? Well, you, I, I know you're right because I'm one of the biggest hypocrites around. But that's why I'm going to church. I'm, I want to do something about it. What are you doing about it? And then he was like, oh, okay, let's get back to work. <laughs> right? It's the opposite of integrity. It really is. And, and, and when the, the, in fact, the Greek word translated as hypocrite is literally means an actor. It means an actor. To be a hypocrite is to be an actor. And in the Greek plays, you, you may have seen these kind of Greek plays, and the actors walk around with this mask and, on a stick. And he's got multiple masks for different persons he plays, and he's this person, and he changes, becomes that person. And now he's this person, really. But isn't that so true of us sometimes? I mean, what mask, what mask do we wear? It's not who we are. We're hiding behind the mask. But who, what mask? Sometimes it's true of us, isn't it? Doesn't that happen to us sometimes as well? Because we, are, we all have hypocrisy at different points of our life. I know I have. We all do at some point. We all do. We lack integrity. It's, so hard, it's often so hard to see within ourselves sometimes, right? Because we get so good at living behind this mask. We don't see within us. We justify our own behaviors. In fact, when you look at Jesus, you see he is far harder on the hypocrites than he is on the, on the prostitutes or the, the adulterers or, or all these other vile whatever things you do. He's more harder on the hypocrites. This is what he says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 25. He says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. Oh, oh you, you're saying that of the ones who should know their Bibles really well? Who's his audience? It's the ones who, know, who read their scriptures. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee. First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will be clean. Then we get down to verse 28. In the same way, on the outside you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Jesus dropped the bomb. In other words, you look religious. You look righteous. You're showing to be outside that you're clean, but your heart is filthy. He goes on to call them blind, right? You don't even see it. You're so blind to your own hypocrisy, right? And Doesn't that happen to us sometimes? Even, honestly, so, Sometimes I'll be here in church, I'll be hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, great is our God. I'm seeing this in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, oh that doesn't look right. That, why is that light on? Why is this person? Oh, yeah. How oh, great. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I look, I look, I'm in this holy moment, but my mind is somewhere else. Have you ever been there? You're like, oh, I have no idea what he's talking. Come on, I know, you, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, KFC or McDonald's. How oh, great <laughs> is our God. Steak or chicken? How? Oh my God. Yeah, you know, you, you, you guys are putting there. You, you're loco. I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. Right. And, and, and sometimes we can, right? And, and, I, and I'm up the front here and I'm like, God, I have to remind myself, I'm here to worship. So I, and so I have to come on up. I have to tell myself, because we can get stuck in the motion, can't we? That's what we do on Sundays. I have to come and say, Lord, I'm, I'm laying it all down. I don't care who's here, who's not here. I don't care what something. Lord, I'm here for you. It's the audience of one, you. I don't, I'm not here to look good in front of someone. Lord, I need Because without you, I have nothing. So, Lord, I, I surrender it all to you. I surrender it all to you. It's, and, and, and when we stay in this heart, we, we begin, God begins to change our hearts and, and I encourage you to keep searching and, and, and seeing, seeing what's really going on. But it's so easy to do, isn't it? So easy. Look, come on, let's be honest. It's real easy. So easy to put on that little mask and play the game. So easy, isn't it? But inside the cup, inside the dish, it's filthy. My grandfather used to always say, in his broken English, he'd go, clean on the outside, but plenty dirty on the inside. 
plenty dirty. And uh, yeah, he had some issues with, with some people. But anyway, he's always said, plenty dirty. And I knew exactly what verse he was describing in the Bible. But here's the thing. What does your life say? Not what you say. There's one thing to say something, this is what I do. What does your life say? What is your integrity worth? What is it worth, right? You go to work, stacks, buy the printer, stacks of paper, reams of paper. Well, I'll just take one home. Well, I won't notice. How much is integrity worth? Or how much that ream of paper cost? Oh, I love my wife. I honor her, but you're watching all these impure images all the time. How much is your integrity worth? How much is it worth? Here's the thing. Regardless of where you are in life, you can choose today. I will be a person of integrity. That's the good news. This good news, come on. That's worth celebrating. <laughs> that today, today I choose to be a person of integrity. So let me ask you this, this thing. What would you do? What would you do if you realize you don't have integrity? What would you do? Or what would you do if you lack integrity? What would you do today if you lack integrity? Here's the thing. Let me, the first thing you need to do is you need to get to know Jesus. I mean, get to know Jesus. Really get to know him. Not just know about him. But have a intimate relationship with Jesus. Is your relationship with Jesus, is it an intimate relationship? Or is it Jesus on the outside? I don't know all about him. He's great and all this. Do you help get to know Jesus? Really do. Get to know him. Not from a distance. Study about him. Because let me tell you right now. You can never live a life of integrity on your own because our life is bent towards sin. It really is. All I have to do is take my eyes off Jesus and I'm already in trouble. I need to keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my story. He's the author and perfecter of my story. Because the minute I start becoming the author and perfecter of my story, oh, I, go, I, go, I go west so fast. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Get to know Him. Allow the Spirit of God to dwell within you and be your guide. Let it guide you. Come on. Be a person of your word. Allow the truth of Jesus to be in you. It's that simple. Let your behavior line up with your belief, but not just your beliefs. More importantly, it's God's beliefs, His teachings. And when you do that, when you walk with God, you will have a built-in guide. You will have peace all of the time. You will gain honor, trust, respect, and influence from those around you. That's where we need to start. Because when you have integrity, that is all that matters. That's what, that's what honestly it is. When you don't have integrity, come on, don't kid yourself. You're not going to be a good partner. You're not going to have a good marriage. You're not going to be a good parent. You're not going to be a good friend. I know this because... I know when, it, when I lack it in my life, I'm exactly that. But the good news is that we can, we can decide today. Today, I choose to be a person of integrity. That's the good news. That today, I choose to be a person of integrity. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfect of your life. It's so easy for our eyes to drift. So easy. When we first moved to Hamilton 18 years ago, Oh my goodness. Chiefs from Auckland, blues. <laughs> and this battle inside of me, Chiefs and blues going on. 18 years ago, we had five kids. We're living in housing New Zealand. But when we first moved here, Puro was still on the solo parent benefit. <laughs> right? And this is how we justified it. Oh, well, you know, I'm still working in Auckland, so I don't really live here. I just stay over every night. <laughs> I don't live here. I just stay over every night. Right? Then we started to come to this church. Oh, man, then God started to mess me up. Actually, no, he began to 
to turn things around the right way up. And God began to change us. It's because the more you walk with Him, the more He guides you. And we made a decision to be people of integrity. Time to take off that mask. I don't know about you, I get tired of wearing a mask. It's so hard to keep changing. I'm in this group, I've got to wear this one. Oh, I'm in this group, I've got to wear this one. Okay, I'm in church, I've got to wear this one. The holy mask. It's full of holes. I don't know. I mean, I get tired. Take, take off the mask. Be people of integrity. So Porter comes off the benefit, the solar period. You know what happens? We struggle. We struggle to make ends meet. We really do. Our car gets repoed. Have you ever had a car repoed before? Our car is repoed. The only bright light on this is that I had just transferred to the Hamilton branch. So now I'm riding my daughter's bike. Shawnee, she's sitting over there. She's back then 12 years old. Wearing a helmet on my head. Doesn't even fit my head. Just sits on top. I was like, I'm lucky I worked the night shift. No one sees me riding this, this, this little bike to work, right? And I start, I start to complain to God. God, we're struggling. I was doing the right thing. And I, Lord, we're doing, I'm doing the right thing and I'm struggling. What's going on here, God? Come on. Let's, I'm coming to the party. You need to come to this party. And I just felt God speak to me. And then I realized, wait a minute. The reason I'm in this financial mess is because of my own dumb financial decisions. It had nothing to do with doing, doing the right thing. It had all to do with my dumb decision. When you find yourself in the middle of the storm, follow Jesus because he knows the way out. It's hard. It's, it's not easy. It takes time, patience. But integrity means to keep an oath even when it hurts. Because today I choose to be a person of integrity. Here we are today, all these years later. Now we own our own home. And we've got a, we own a car. I'm no longer riding a bike. We have seven amazing children, five beautiful grandkids. If I knew grandkids were this good, we would have had them first. How does Psalm 15 end? He who lives a life of integrity... The Bible says what? Will never be shaken. You will never be shaken when you live not only, not only to your own beliefs, but more importantly, to the beliefs and teachings of God. You will never be shaken. The good news is that you can choose today. Today I choose to be a person of integrity. I have to say this every single day. Today, I choose to be a person of integrity. I've got to keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my story. Today, I choose to be a person. Every decision I make, every financial decision I make, every friendship decision I make, everything, how I relate to people. Today, I choose to be a person of integrity. But He loves you so much. He does not leave you on your own. The Holy Spirit dwells within you, and He begins to guide you when you listen to His voice. Today, I choose to be a person of integrity. Come on, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your grace. Oh, Lord, how I needed your grace. How I continue to need your grace. Thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient for us all. So, Father, I'm praying for my brothers and my sisters in this room and those who are watching online who struggle with different masks. Well, Lord, I, we understand sometimes we need to protect ourselves, but Lord, I pray may we be people of integrity, people of the word, people of, of you. Let the Holy Spirit dwell within us to be our guide. You know, if you're here this morning, I don't know where you are with God. Maybe you walked with him and somehow you kind of fallen away. I know I've been there before. I've fallen away before. And he brought me to Hamilton. And he set me on the right path. If God could do it for me, he can do it for you. Or maybe you've never known him. Come on. 
the greatest decision you can make is to be a follower of him, Jesus, who loves you so much, that God loved you so much that he stepped into his creation. He bound himself with flesh, and on the cross he died for all your sins. Your greatest regrets, he set you free. The only way you can step into that freedom is to make a decision. So, Lord, I'm going to, I decide to be free. I'm sick and tired of being fake. I'm sick and tired of wearing a mask. I'm sick, oh Lord, I want to be, be a better partner. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better friend. Lord, I, I want to be a better follower of you. So, Lord, I decide, I'm decide that today I'm going to follow you. I'm ready to leave my life of sin and follow you. My heart is open. My heart is breaking. Thank you for your grace, your grace that sets us free. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand wherever you are. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, it's so good to be back in church. So good to be people. Come on, if you made, if you made the decision to follow Jesus, or well, encourage you to fill in the one card. Tick the box. The reason we want you to do that is when you hand it to the info desk, we'll give you a free Bible. We're, a, we're better together on this journey. Uh, our, our vision is real love serves. That God is real. He's real. Not just on Sunday. When you go home, when you're all alone with all your kids, God is still real. When you're at work and, and, and everyone is pushing against you, He's real. He's still there. He's real. He's real. He's real. That God wants to know you. Here's the thing, he already does, but will you know him? Will you know him? Second part of our vision is love. Love community, we're, we're better together. We weren't meant to do life alone and we're gonna be launching our connect groups soon. You know what I love about connect groups? Connect groups is when we get amongst the people that we learn to trust. Because you know, I understand, we, we need masks. Sometimes we need to protect ourselves. But what's, we, we get into trouble when we're the only ones that knows what's going on behind here. And when we get into a connect group, we, we learn to take the mask off, and when we do that, we find freedom for whatever we're struggling with. We've got an amazing men's group, and oh my gosh, they're just so good. I'm just, we're women's groups, we've got so many groups there. We, that's our connect groups. That's why we're part of our vision. Love, love community. And the last part of our, of our vision is serves purpose and calling. You have purpose. You really do. You weren't just born just to eat your lunch or eat someone else's lunch like I used to do back in high school. <laughs> right? And then do wake up, do it all over again. You have purpose, real purpose. And we run this amazing program. We're going to launch it called Growth Track. It's all about discovering how God made you, what's your, what your, what, what, uh, what your spiritual gifts, what, what, your, um, what, your, what all these things, how you can get connected together, what's our vision, what, who we are. Come get to know us. And that's the, so sign up to just fill in the one card. So it's perfect. And, you know, and then the, the, no, when you, and be part of our serve team on a Sunday. Make a difference. You know, one of the, uh, my, my first thing I used to, when I first come to this church, my first job was, if you look back, you see Elliot, there's Elliot, Elliot, wave your hands, Elliot, I want to see if you're listening. There's a door there next to him. My job when I first started serving in this church was to stand where Elliot is and open and close that door. That was my job. Man, I loved it. I, I was so faithful. I was so faithful at opening and shutting that door. They were actually really good at doing that. We, we're going we're gonna to promote you. And I went from there to becoming the chairman of the church. So every Sunday, I would set up the chairs. <laughs> and if you keep doing that, you'll go from there to salads and then to fries. And, to, and then, no. Come on, join us. Come on, let's get back into it. We're better together. Let's serve. Let's open up the doors. Let's tell, tell people, to, it's time to come on in because there's a Savior who loves you who can set you free today. We're better together. Come on, um, thank, you so, oh, thank you so much for giving. We, there's three ways we give online. Um, in our drop boxes, um, or you can do it if possible, honestly. Um, we, uh, uh, so just the other week, we gave $1,000 to our local primary school to help kids in need. The only way we can do things like that is, is because of you. You're part of, you gave to the local school. You gave, you helped, uh, you helped a, parent, uh, a parent out with groceries that weekend for that school. That's where that, that goes. And they ring us up and sometimes say, we've got this parent, this, this family struggling. But because of the way you give, we're able to bless a family with, with, with food and people just ring us up because of the way you give. This is what we do. This is who we are. Real love serves. Anyway, I just get passionate. Should, should, no, that's what I shouldn't, I shouldn't be emceeing and preaching. I'll just keep preaching. But anyway, come on, let me pray for you. So Father, I thank you. That, uh, all those watching online and everyone inside the building, so good to be home. 
Oh, Lord, it is so good. But Lord, I just pray this week as we go and have our way, pray for those who are, um, who are still struggling with COVID, who are strug- still, um, Father, we pray for healing. We pray for, for those who are, who are at home sick. Just pray, Father, for your peace to be with them. And Lord, just bring healing. Father, we'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. But before you go, Kevin Billingham in the UK, happy 69th birthday. 69, UK. Wow, I have no idea what time it is over there, but man, you have a party tonight before you get to bed. 69, wow. Let me, oh, give me your address and we'll fly over. We'll join you. I'll be cool, won't it? And uh, fantastic. Is that that's it, eh? Any other celebrations? Anyway, that's it. God bless everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the week. God bless everyone. Come on, give a hand, Lord. hand to the Lord.